Step three is the prayer selection. It answers the basic question, what kind of prayer will I need to pray to help this person? There are basically two kinds. There's the prayer toward God. The most common, of course, is petition. You can ask for the Spirit's presence. The Holy Spirit, please come and, and rest on this person in this situation and bless us and heal us and uh, show us how to, how to pray. You can ask for healing. Petition is simply asking. Asking God to come, asking God to heal, asking God to lead. It can be intercessory prayer. It can be prayer in the mind. By that I mean it can be intelligent prayer, prayer that can either be vocalized or not, in which you intercede for an individual. It can be prayer in the spirit. You can pray in tongues. That doesn't mean with spirit, with gusto. It means in the spirit, in tongues. Now, I use that, that alternative often. It helps me. One of the, my basic problems with uh, speaking in tongues for years is I didn't know what benefit it would have. I didn't know how beneficial it was. I didn't know what a profitable tool it was. I thought it was just a nuisance thing uh, that some weird people did once in a while. But when I, I finally got into it and began doing it on a regular basis, uh, I found the profitability of it. I didn't realize what edification meant. I didn't know that tongues edified. I, you know, read 1 Corinthians 14 many times, but I never saw that text. But one day the Spirit of God highlighted it for me, and I realized that edification is the inner building up of the Spirit, your spirit. And as you speak in tongues, your spirit is edified, exalted, lifted up, built up. And when it's built up, it's like antenna going up, and you're able to receive signals better. And so often when I'm praying for somebody and, I, and it's not going well, I'll step back and just intercede and, and I'll, I'll pray in my spirit. And often right in that process, God will suddenly give me a gift of the spirit and I'll know exactly what's wrong with the person and I can move in and begin ministering. And so I want you to know the profitableness, the profitability of that kind of prayer in intercession. Now there are those other kinds of prayers that are the prayers from God. You, you petition. You intercede, and then sometimes God answers, and he will give you the command of faith. Numerous times in the New Testament we see people saying, Rise in the name of Jesus. Stand, see, walk, pick up your bed, come forth. Those are the commands of faith. Now, you, you can't just adopt those. You can't say, Oh, that's the one I'm supposed to pray. Well, you know, come forth. <laughs> you can look real silly, you know, trying to do those things. Those things have to come under the immediate auspices of the Spirit. They have to be initiated by the Spirit, stirred in your inner being. The Spirit of God will cause you to do it. And when He does, He does. I remember one time I was in um, uh, London again, and I was in a Pentecostal church, and, and we had a tremendous move of the Spirit. It was the strangest night I'd ever had. Well, I be, as soon as I began ministering, I, I hadn't gotten three sentences out until a lady in the second row right in front of me a lady in the Salvation Army began shrieking and howling like a wolf. And she blew out of her chair and, and, and you know, was crouched. And she looked like um, the hunchback of Notre Dame, Quasimodo, you know. <laughs> it was awful. She, her, you know, jaw was all, and she's making these terrible noises. And she had her uniform on, and I thought, oh, no. You know, she, this is humiliating. This is embarrassing. I found out that she'd been a street evangelist for 20 years, and that God had used her mightily in winning many people to Christ. But here she was in a full-on demonic manifestation, and I didn't have theology for this. At that point, I did not believe there was any way that a Christian could have be controlled in any sense by a demon. And here's demons speaking, cursing, blaspheming God. I turned to uh, Ken Gullickson was with me, and he was seated over here on the right. I turned again. I, I said, Ken, I think this girl needs inner healing. <laughs> Ken, God bless him, he's so good. He came and got her, and they drug her off. And the only place they had to take her was kind of a cry room in the back, you know. So they took her back in there, and I'm trying to preach, and you can hear her back in there. She's, I mean, she's knocking those guys all over the room. <laughs> Wham, bam, you know. And ho, oh, oh, and she's thinking. <laughs> and you can hear Ken, Ken rebuking in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and I'm trying to preach, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was so absurd, you know. <laughs> and every now and then, I mean, I had to make comments about it. So every now and then, I'd stop and smile and say, "Isn't it wonderful what God can do?" You know, blessing. 
And people are, people are seated towards me, but looking over their shoulder. Oh, you know, I don't know what they expected. You know. I don't know, you know, it was great. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, that woman was beautifully delivered. Oh, it was precious. When he, he, it took him about two hours of work. Well, in the meantime, the Spirit of God visited the sanctuary. And we saw in about a 25-minute period more miracles than we have ever seen in any other meeting at any other time. Almost everybody we touched was instantly and powerfully delivered and healed. It was one of the most powerful moves of the Spirit I've ever seen. And at one point, I had a lady standing in front of me, just a beautifully groomed lady. And uh, uh, she was a black lady, and she, she was very sophisticated, very well educated. And, uh, and uh, she explained to me that she wanted me to pray for her arm. Well, I couldn't hear her very well because it was noisy. And, and so I, I prayed her a quick prayer, and I said, uh, move your arm. And she said, you don't understand. I can't move my arm. I was born without the muscles that you need to move your arm. I said, oh, well, you don't need a healing. You need a miracle. Receive it. I couldn't believe it. It's the first time I'd ever yelled. Like that. <laughs> and when I said, receive it, she went, oh, <laughs> I started running around the room, going like this. You know? It was great. It was hot, you know. And I'm standing there looking at her, and I'm so excited. Well, she had her grandmother with her, and her grandmother was about this tall, you know, and about that wide. And she, she was standing next to me, and she was standing there smiling like this, and she had big, big eyes, but she was blind. And uh, they, they were white, you know, across the, the pupils. She had uh, glaucoma. And, and I turned to see her, and, and, I, and I started to say, what do you want? And when I saw that she was blind, but again, before I could stop myself, I'm illustrating command of faith, before I could stop myself, I said, see! And her eyes turned beautifully limpid brown pools before the word was wrung out of the room. I looked at that, and I just started sobbing. I had never seen such a miracle in my life. And that lady knew how to get healed. <laughs> oh, man, did she dance. And she grabbed her grandchildren, and she's running around the room, and she's hopping, and she's dancing, and she's laughing and rejoicing. It turned out she had about 15 or 16 members of her family there. And, you know, the last time I saw them, they were going down the street just having a party. You know? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> the command of faith. Sometimes it's the pronouncement of faith. On another occasion, a, a couple were talking to me about their child. As they were talking to me, the Lord caused me to speak. And I said, go home, your child is well. I've never said that before or since. But as they were talking, the Spirit of God, and you know when that unction is there, you know that anointing coming on you. And you speak it. And they went home, and sure enough, the child was well. And the child was dying. But the child was instantly healed. It, see, it's profitable. It's profitable unto the Lord for you to be able to receive the impressions, the unctions, the gifts of the Spirit. Furthermore, there's the, the prayer uh, of uh, rebuking, binding, and expulsing as it, as it relates to the devil and his hordes, the demons. And so from time to time, you have to break their power. Sometimes you contain their power through binding. Other times you have to expulse them, which is simply to mean eliminate their presence. And there'll be various kinds of leading and various kinds of direction to do those things. Now, all of those are unctions. All of those are manifestations. They come upon you. They come upon you for the moment. If you hesitate, they're gone. And so you have to learn to be sensitive and, and wait on those things. When they come, you've got to go with them, and you have to go right then. And if you toy with them, they're gone. All right? So, be filled means be being filled with the Spirit, a continuing process in which you have to be receptive and open so that you constantly receive these unctions, these manifestations for service again and again and again and again and again as the Spirit of God gives them. 